thickness of the air as soon as I walked off our United Airlines flight at the tiny Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport in South Texas. The early summer steam of the Rio Grande Valley sneaking in between the weak seal connecting the jet bridge and the plane. The gray marine layer that draped my hometown of Los Angeles when I took off no longer seemed worth complaining about as sweat started dripping down my back. As producer Arnie Hakela and I headed up the ramp, I pulled off the sweatshirt I flew in, my T-shirt now sticking to my skin even as we made our way through the air-conditioned terminal toting our carry-ons. I'm probably going to get sick, I thought to myself. We headed past the baggage claim, out the doors, under a row of palm trees, and across a small parking lot to pick up our rented minivan. We had rushed to Brownsville not far from where the Rio Grande meets the Gulf of Mexico after being invited by a Trump administration official to tour what is known as Casa Padre with several other journalists. Its name reflected the street it was on, meant to honor the Spanish priest who, in 1804, established the first permanent settlement on the southern tip of a nearby island. Literally translated, it means Father's House we'd soon learn how regrettably misnamed the facility was. The 250,000-square-foot former Walmart, what we were told was a shelter, was holding nearly 1,500 migrant boys, 10 to 17 years old, hundreds of whom had been separated from their parents as a direct result of Donald Trump's zero-tolerance immigration policy. By then, the existence and execution of Trump's family separations had been widely reported, but no journalist had seen the realities from the inside. I was anxious. On the four-mile drive from the airport, I asked Arnie to pull over at a Walgreens so I could run inside to buy a car charger for my laptop. I figured it was going to be a long night and we'd be waiting in the car in between live shots. I paced the aisles looking for one. No luck, but I grabbed a little blue notebook. No cameras would be allowed inside. Some dry shampoo. I'm a TV reporter with curly hair about to do a live shot in 90-degree humidity, and a cold Gatorade. For mysterious reasons, the yellow flavor calms my nerves. Arnie picked up a bag of almonds like he always does when we're on assignment. We paid and were on our way. In minutes, I'd bear witness to the reality that our country, under the direction of President Donald Trump, was ripping parents and children apart. Casa Padre would become the scene of international breaking news later that night. It has now been two years since I walked into Casa Padre with that Walgreens notebook. After its pages were filled with four different stories, it lived on my desk at home for months, a reminder of the tragedy it had helped me document. In late 2018, as my wife... Son and I were moving out of our rental and into our first home. I put the memo book, as it says on the front in big bold type, in a bag with other valuable possessions and brought it to a storage locker. A year later, as I began writing this book, I went and dug the bag out from under boxes of Christmas decorations. With my iPhone flashlight, I found the notebook at the bottom of the bag. Holding it in my hand for the first time in months, made my heart race. The reporting inside by President Trump's own admission contributed to his ending systematic family separations. I didn't like the sight or the feeling of families being separated, the president said, while signing the executive order that stopped the policy he had claimed days earlier did not exist. The notebook burned in my hand. Inside the five by ten foot storage unit surrounded by camping equipment, and a baby-changing table, and a pendant lamp that was gathering dust, I sat on a stool and flipped open its tiny cover to the first page of spiral-bound lined paper. If someone else found these 50 pages of chicken scratch, they'd have no idea what they were looking at. I barely needed to read a word to bring back the sights and sounds and feelings of being there. As of Friday, June 8th, 11,214 migrants in UAC, Unaccompanied Alien Children Program. Average length.